consulting team and I'm April Schupel senior developer advocate and I am so excited to have brought the live build challenge over from nice sunny Florida uh, at Appian World back in April to not so sunny Greenwich although the Sun did come out today so hopefully it's just for us um, and this is actually my backyard I've been living in the UK for the past eight years despite my accent we had so much fun at Appian World bringing the Live Build Challenge to the audience live and in person that we just had to bring it over here. Yeah, no, I really wanted to bring it over, but in order for the show to be okay, we need to make sure we share the burden of jet lag so at least one person will be 100%. Yes. So that's Jenny today. That's definitely me. <laughs> Um, now, there are some differences, April, between Europeans and Americans. Yes. We Appian in Europe and Appian World. Um, mostly, for one, they're not as loud. Real. And the other thing, although they're kind of rivaling that today, yeah. the other thing is that they're a lot more, let's say, uh, reserved, maybe not as uh, big and boisterous. So I think all of our contestants are looking to build an adequate app, not necessarily a uh, world's best uh, champion back to back. So. But despite that demeanor, we're really excited. They're a very fierce group of competitors, um, and they're going to give us a good show. Yeah, I think we're ready to meet them. Let's get off stage Absolutely. and make sure we bring them on. All right, coming from you behind the announcer's desk, we're going to be introducing our contestants. So first up, we have Richard Michaelis from Accenture in Germany. Doing that slow walk on the stage. Yes. Next up, representing Yexel in the cheddar, we have Aparajita Singh coming to us from London, recent transplant from India. Next in the pomegranate booth, we have Paul Enoch from Slips in France. And last but not least, in Power Green, Mario Segovia from CoForge, originally from Mexico, now living in London. All right, so April, tell us about this challenge. What are our competitors going to be building? So uh, maybe you may have guessed by our attire, it's going to be football themed. The World Cup will be starting this weekend, and what better way to get European excited and to get in the European spirit than to do something that the US doesn't really care about at all. And we all know that it's just because we know we would lose. Definitely. Uh, actually, I have a joke about that. Oh, goodness. So why are Appian developers bad at football? Why, Jenny? Because they're too busy sailing. <laughs> Whew, OK. Pity laughs all around. All right. Look, okay, let's get started. Let's get into the challenge. Uh, what are the contestants going to be building? Well, they're going to be building a site to show you information about the match schedule for the World Cup. Not only this, you'll be able to go and vote on which team that you think will win. So this is going to be use, using our latest 22.4 release, which just came out last Friday, and all of our latest portals capabilities. So at the end of this challenge, we'll be sending out the links to what they're about to build in just 30 minutes. So we have the MVP, but of course there's always more that you want to do, and they have a long list of stretch goals to choose from. But the question is, what strategy will they go for? Pick a lot of low-hanging fruit that will be easy to get, or push for the most complex thing that will be a lot more challenging to complete, but worth a lot of points if they can finish it in time. And what is the prize if they succeed in this challenge? Well, the prize is 2,500 pounds, as well as a guaranteed spot to be one of the six contestants at the Appian World Live Build Challenge next May in San Diego. 25 pounds, what is that in USD? Uh, 
Uh, 25 pounds in USD, isn't it about the same? I, I guess it depends what prime minister we have at the time. Ooh. But coming from the solutions consulting team, I'm actually interested in the tech side. So all of these contestants are going to be building on 22.4, which came out on Friday. That means they're going to be using the latest version with all the power that Appian has brought with Data Fabric and with the application builder. Uh, not only are they going to be building out portals so we can use unauthenticated access to go to their sites and see what they build, they're also going to be building the drag and drop or using the drag and drop designers so that as developers they can build powerful interfaces, um, complex data structures, and also workflows. So with that, I think it looks like they are ready. So let's bring up their screens to make sure they're all starting in the same place. Um, you know, in the World Cup, you already always wonder who has the group of death, but I think this is definitely the group of death who will be competing for our uh, Appian World Cup Championship next year. Um, I think we're ready to get started, so they'll go on my whistle. On your mark, get set, go! And they're off! Oh, I'm so excited. I already feel a lot of adrenaline, and I know they're in focus mode. So they're all starting from the same place, which is just a blank application. And it looks like they're all starting with the record structure, which is probably where I would go as well. Me too. I love starting with the data. Yeah, you've got, from those initial screens, you can start with your data, you can start with your people if you're building out your interfaces, or you can start with the process. Looks like they've all got a similar strategy, but we'll definitely start to see some diversions as they go along. All right, so uh, next up, why don't we go through each contestant, let's zoom in on their screen and maybe talk a little bit more about each one is doing. Yeah, absolutely. So we're starting with Richard's screen up front. So as I said, they're starting out with the record and if you've been using Appian for a long time, you've definitely noticed over uh, 2022, a lot of great changes with building out the records and incorporating really complicated and interesting data structures into one place. So it looks like uh, Richard is configuring the record to point to a country database. I'm guessing based on the prompt that that's going to be some reference data. He's going to start setting up his relationships right away. It's like he anticipated what I was going to say or he's listening to it. Yeah. And as we move over to Aparajita, she is also working on creating those records. Now, I have included a few database tables that include match, um, country, uh, group information, venue information, but I like to torture them a bit and include a lot more things than they actually need. So again, strategy, what are they going to go for? Are they going to realize they don't need to create every record depending on what it is that they're doing? Yeah, keeping in mind they only have 30 minutes to build all of this out, so they're really looking to see strategically what they can get the most points with in the limited amount of time. Absolutely. You can do a lot with Appian in that time, but we like to make it a challenge still, so to give a lot of different user stories. Absolutely. Sense. Let's go over to Poll. Again, right. still on the records, we're all uh, working to get started with uh, that foundation so they can really get going and get ready to build you a beautiful portal. It looks like he's getting a little further though with his match record, so that's really probably the core of this data set, and linking all of those relationships into that one location, so that when it comes to building out his reports or building out his actions, everything's just a lot easier and it's all focused around that one record. Absolutely, and I just saw with Mario's screen, uh, he's adding those relationships, and I just love seeing that data model come to life every time you add a new relationship, and then you can zoom out and see how all of your data is related together. And don't forget, right now they're using data from their Appian databases, but they can use data sourced from integration, sourced from any other system. What else we got, Jenny? Yeah, I think one of the things that probably in reality would happen is calling an API to get some of this matched data directly. We loaded it up in a database, but we'll start to see them build integrations later on when they start to set up their portal so that everybody else can access what they're building as they go along. Absolutely. Um, but we've heard from, um, kind of looked in on each of the competitors, and we'll keep checking in, keep checking what they're doing, but it's probably a good idea to honestly learn a little more about them. You heard their um, company and their country, but not much about them as competitors. So uh, 
April, do you want to give us a little talk about what Richard is up to in his story? I would really love to. I mean, one of my favorite parts about doing this is getting to interview and get to know all of the developers up front. So some of our developers in the audience, you may recognize Richard's name or face because he is very active in our online community. He's actually number 16 all time in community discussion. So I'm sure at some point, if you've looked up a question, he's probably given you the answer. So are you saying he's a real constant in these discussions? He's definitely, definitely a constant in dis discussions. I mean, the self-proclaimed Appian fanboy, he is so active online, and he really wanted to compete so that he could feel the energy in person and make those connections and hopefully get that guaranteed spot at Appian World. And which... <laughs> Great, great shout out. Yeah. Um, and Richard also is not just a sum of his professional life. He also has a lot of other varied interests. He is a cat dad, uh, which I very much appreciate. He also um, is a big fan of going to the cinema, of uh, playing table tennis. But most interesting, and I saw him in the back pumping himself up, he actually has a um, hobby as a break dancer. So we'll see if he can break down this application and its requirements, and hopefully the application itself won't break down. Yeah, no, he, I think he'll do pretty good. Let's come back over, just look at the screens real, real quick, see where there are. So it looks like some of them are already on the a web API, while some other ones are still working on their record data model. What do you think? Ooh, let's pull up a Parajita, because I like how she's starting to play around with the data model itself. So it looks like she's actually creating some new pieces um, one of my other favorite things about the records is the ability to create those custom record fields. So when you're starting to play with your data model, it doesn't have to be the data that's just in the record or in the database already. You can start to calculate things. So you don't have to build really complicated views. Appian can do all that work for you. So it really is that lower code it really is. fabric stitching everything together. Yeah, and um, also another thing that they're doing is because uh, I have not given them the table to keep track of who is voting for who to be the favorite. That is something they're creating through low-code data modeling right within the product, which another one of my favorite features. I mean, records, just every release, better and better and better and better. And it looks like uh, Mario's already starting on his interface, so I think he's the first one in the interface designer. He is starting out with the uh, drag and drop screens Getting that grid on, that's also one of my favorite things with the new records, is the ability to quickly build out grids, you know, take the data and uh, ex expose it to the different users in these interfaces. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I always say that, like, every release, it's like I could cut a few minutes off of my Academy Project's time. I think, based on my Academy Project I did over four years ago, I could probably do what took me a full week in, I don't know, an hour less. Yeah, if I look back at my Academy Project, almost 10 years ago, uh, that's a, a very painful place where I was, and it's amazing how far we've come in a decade. The tech looks completely different, and like you said, the amount of time it would have taken to build the same thing is incredibly shorter. Incredibly. All right, let's get to know, uh, keep going and getting to know our contestants and go over to Aparajita. So she is the most tenured developer that we have in the group. She's been working on Appian since 2016, and she's actually an engineer, she's passionate about it. She's the only engineer in her family, but she still loves using that creative side. And in talking to developers, I find a lot of them do feel like Appian is a great mix of problem solving and creativity, which you could think of as one and the same. She's and also, oh, go ahead, Jenny. What made, well, I was just wondering about her uh, motivations for joining the Live Build Challenge. Oh, so uh, like I said before, I mean, she moved from India to London just three weeks ago. So not only dealing with a big relocation, but getting ready for this challenge. I mean, can you imagine being on stage, the bright lights on you, and all of you standing out there staring at them <laughs> while they're doing this? I mean, it's, it's a lot of stress, but she obviously excels under pressure, has 10 out of 10 C CSAT scores for all of her projects that she's ever done. And she's also a lead certified developer. So let's look into some of her hobbies. You know, like I said, she's very creative. On the left, that is one of her doodles. Isn't that just incredible? And on the right, when she sent it to me, I thought it might be a picture, but that's actually a painting that she did. Wow. Yeah. Very impressive. Very um, impressive. Let's see what Aparajita's up to now, actually. Of course. Let's look over. 
Ah, so she is deep into the web API. So this is the difference between using our portals versus just an interface that's unauthenticated. There's a little more strategy as far as integrations are concerned, having them communicate together, because those portals are actually split into another um, environment and other architecture, which helps them scale a lot more. But it means we're also starting to work in integrations within the application itself, even just communicating between that portal and the different actions and her application that she's going to be building out. Yeah, absolutely. And if we look over, it seems like they are starting to be in different places. And this is the exciting thing about the extra credit. The further we go along, they're diverging in different paths, all going their unique way. And we can see what different folks are working on. So um, let's go zoom in on Paul. Uh, he's also starting on the interface. You know, I may need to give him a yellow card oh, for immediately going into an right expression rule. Come on. <laughs> let's use some of those templates. Anyway, okay, let's get to know a little bit more about him and, and maybe redeem himself a bit. All right. So he's the opposite of Aparajita Pol. He is our youngest competitor in terms of Appian um, tenure experience, yes. He's been doing Appian for less than two years. Wow, uh, so 2021, he must have started under the pandemic, so he's a pandemic Appianite. Yes, a pandemic Appianite. And actually, it's interesting. He was actually training to become a pilot. Pandemic hits, and he's like, well, guess I should get a job inside. Um, but he does love being outside. He's really a great adrenaline junkie and told me that if he won, he would use the prize money to uh, take a trip over to Kilimanjaro. And he shared some really great photos uh, of some of his adventures out there and him in front of a plane, et cetera. All right, let's check yeah. back in. Now, before we do that, do you think that France is going to win the World Cup like they did last year? OK, Jenny, first of all, I don't know anything about football. But also, if I said France, it would seem like I'm biased. Mm. So maybe I should say something like Italy, right? Oh, no, they're not in it. But. Uh, <laughs> You guys, once they're done, will be able to vote for who you think will win the World Cup uh, based on the portals in those uh, MVP features. Let's zoom in on Mario. Let's see, what is Mario up to? He's starting to build out another record type. So it looks like he has that basis of the interface and now starting on another uh, record. Yes. We love our security as well that he's wildly ignoring, but that's okay because <laughs> these days you can do that. Appian takes care of a lot of it for you. Exactly. Appian sets it up already. I remember when I was a trainer uh, constantly yelling at my students to make sure they set up their security, and now unfortunately I can't yell at them about that. I'll have to find something new to yell at them. I for. know. Appian keeps innovating, so we have to be innovative in the new things that we can uh, berate developers about. So, um, I don't know if you guys saw too, he named this record prediction. And I saw this while he was like doing some training early on. And when every single second counts, name it something shorter. Come on, my guy. All right, let's get over and get to know him a little better. Uh, okay. Did you want to point something right. out, Jenny? No, no. No? We're good? Okay. <laughs> so, Mario. Mario? Yeah. Mario has been developing on Appian since 2019, and he actually won the 2020 Appian World Online Hackathon with an app called Simplify Alzheimer's, which helped Alzheimer's patients do cognitive assessments. Um, he also really loves Japanese culture and music, and he wants to show off his growth from being a mechatronics robotics engineer, teaching himself Java, and then finding an opportunity in Appian totally dissing Java and going straight into Appian because he felt like there was a lot more opportunity there. And I love the internationalism in this group. So we have people from all over the world coming to London to start to build a really cool app right in front of us. Um, and as far as that internationalism goes, you know, he's from Mexico, living in the UK, but also loves Japanese culture. So he sent us this um, video of his pastime. Um, which we can see is quite uh, different than Appian building, but uh, interesting nonetheless. But it still gives him that edge because this is his Tycho group. They actually do live performances, so he knows what it's like to be in front of a crowd. Although I think with two big things to work with, it's a lot less room for typos with your little fingers <laughs> going across the keyboard, right? Two big things to hit one big thing. That's true. Difficult. And. Now, with these types of activities, it's definitely something that you need a lot of preparation for, a lot of practice to do any sort of performance. 
Uh, now, these guys were up at a bit of a disadvantage because, like we said before, they're building on 22.4. That didn't come out till Friday. So over the weekend, they got the prompt and were scrambling to try to figure out how they were going to build, how many points they were going to get, and also start to um, learn some of the new things they'd never touched before. I think that all of them um, eventually had never built a portal and so had to learn it very quickly. Um, so we'll see if they come out of the gates at the end of this uh, as portal experts. And maybe if any of you guys are interested in portals, uh, you can come and ask them a thing or two. Yeah. And you can also download this prompt from community and try it for yourself. So if you think you have what it takes, you can try that out. All right. Let's go back and see what they're up to, Jenny. Yeah, let's bring up Richard. Going over to Richard. Because he's also in the interface designer, but pulling up a little more um, of some interesting objects. I see he's playing around with the color palettes, um, using that drag and drop interface designer to drop all of the, I think this is his uh, World Cup voting screen. And so he's starting to build that out quite quickly. Um, there are also some good patterns in there he could be dropping in. Um, looks like he's going from a true build from scratch and controlling the entire screen himself. But at the very least, he's still going a little quicker than Paul, who immediately expression mode, That's true. trying to type every little thing. He's getting his structure set up, and then he'll flip over to configure it exactly how he would like it. Let's uh, move over. Parajita, also working on an interface. Oh, I like those um, sections as well. I like the ability now, this year, to be able to add things like icons into the section headers, make them a little more uh, controlled as far as that UX is concerned. We have a lot of control over how we build these really nice interfaces and screens for users, especially now that it's going to be going out into the wild in a portal. Um, we want a lot of fine control, and that's being provided to us. Uh, in the interface designer. Let's see how some of the other interfaces are going. Oh, oh my goodness. Every time I go classic. to pull, it seems like he wants to uh, match with his color by having that uh, error up on the screen. But who knows? Maybe he's just trying to uh, make a comeback from behind, a dramatic comeback. <laughs> Although, to be honest, I'm really liking the colors on those screens, you know, when they work. Um, clearly, step one is making it functional. Step two is making it look nice. But I think if he's got the first one sorted out, it's starting to have some very interesting color schemes um, and layouts for that voting screen itself. Oh, going over tomorrow, he's directly in the database. And I think I just saw Notepad. My friend, exporting from the database to copy it into a constant. We told you this would be something we shamed you for. Here is the shame. <laughs> Come on, my friend. All right, let's go back, see the full view. Um, and Jenny, oh my goodness, the time is just flying by. Looks like we have 13 minutes, 45 seconds left. All right, we're over halfway on our way to two thirds through. They've already started building quite a few different objects within that time, but I think the pressure is starting to build up, you know, starting to see those red errors, starting to frantically go back to your um, expression mode to try to get something to work. Um, but it's really a good time to, I think, switch to acknowledge the crowd out there. So everybody, can you give a big cheer for them over halfway through? <laughs> and remember, we're also streaming live on YouTube, so give your best like and subscribe faces, ring that bell for notifications, all of the other things my YouTube influencers will love to do. Absolutely. All right. Here we go. Back, uh, what are we going to next, Jenny? Let's see, should we talk about some of the other things going on? Uh, some plugs, maybe? Yes. Plug-ins, no. Plugs for other things. Terrible. I know. So uh, we've got our community hub over there, so go check it out, as well as any of the um, demo booths. There's a lot of different demos going on where you can learn more about Appy, and we can talk to you in more detail one-on-one -on -one about anything. And remember, at home, you can always request your app in Community Edition environment, and that stays up to date with GA. So even if uh, your client is not always exactly up to date, you can get the latest and greatest with app in Community Edition just within minutes. Um, what else we got? I mean, Jenny, all of these are certified developers up here, right? Yep. And anyone in the audience, you can get a free certification voucher over at the Community Hub as well to make sure you level up, get that next certification. Now, speaking of certifications, this is hearkening me back to my training days. So I've been at Appian, I mentioned, or maybe for about 10 years now. 
and half of that time was in training, half of that is in the solution consultant department, and I've actually seen a lot of my former students here, people who have been trained by me, so I was wondering if just by a show of hands, anybody who's been in my class before can make themselves known. Anyone learned Appian <laughs> from Jenny in the crowd? Come Appian on. Appian people included. Excellent. Okay. So these are all the people who should actually be up here because clearly they are the experts. None of these have been my former students, but um, hopefully they're still giving their good descriptions, setting their security, and following the naming conventions, although I'm not that impressed, and we're going to have to start pulling out these penalties. You know, Jenny, you say that maybe if they learn from you, they would win, but also, you were teaching five years ago. We've had 20 new releases since then. What, you know, Maybe Paul has an advantage in learning on the more recent version of Appian and being able to really bring in those latest features and not be stuck in his old ways. That's true. He doesn't have any baggage. He doesn't remember the days of Notepad++ and um, other horrors that we won't speak of. Well, clearly uh, Mario does because he's trying to export from the database and uh, copy that data over. All right. Well, we'll see what strategy works out for them. Um, should we check in on what they are building? Yeah. Who do you think we should go to? I think uh, it looks like they're all in the interface designer, all you know, marginally working through it. Oh, but I do want to see Mario. Oh, I think that's yeah. Starting to look nice. Okay, he's redeeming himself from the use of constants, exporting from the database. It seems like he started with one of those nice uh, templates that mm. you get when you first open an interface designer. Great places to start from, and then you can switch around and change the data to be fitting for whatever your use case is. Oh, and can we check in on Paul? Because now that he doesn't have an error, I really like to see what that's looking like. Ah. Now, despite the error, we've got some flags in there. Flags is an extra credit item, so he's really going for those low hanging fruits. Yeah. Um, we are seeing a lot of really nice colors, and in fact, there's bonus points for the person who gets the nicest UX. Um, out of the four of them. So focusing on how nice it looks versus if it's functional, it's a balance, but it's definitely a strategy. Yeah, so that's true. And you know, our UX team, our internal UX team that works on design.appian.com, which you should all check out for your design guidance, they are going to be looking at these and voting for their favorite, although it's only 30 minutes, so don't be too harsh on them. It might be the vote for least bad versus best interface. Whoa. Sick burn. Sick burn. Sick burn. <laughs> oh, goodness, we're under 10 minutes. I didn't even realize, Jenny. Yep, so we are taking a look at what they're doing. I want to take a look at actually Aparajita's. Let's zoom in. Because she has a lot of functionality there. She has her match grids. She also has her form to enter in who will win the cup. Uh, those are two separate. Uh, let's say, requirements. So it's interesting that she's combining them all on one screen. With portals, you can still build multiple screens and kind of have a tabular view. Um, so she's incorporating it all into one. Um, but as far as the World Cup is concerned, I'm very nervous about the current group that the US is in. Uh, we've got US and England. And Jenny. I don't want to say anything too, uh, <laughs> too offensive here, but um, I'll definitely be rooting for the one with the red, white, and blue in its flag. Oh my goodness. Such a diplomat over here, but why would you ever root for the US? I mean, we know they're not going to win. That's true. Um, now, while they're starting to build out, I was just wondering, April, what one of your favorite things that have come out this year of Appian are? You know, it's just so hard to say. There's always great new things coming out. When we did the first Live Build Challenge last year, the big hot new tech was record relationships. And since then, every single release, records are getting more and more and more powerful. And I just love how much of the legwork it just takes out for you if you take the time up front to set up your records correctly. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I think portals, it's my favorite tech. It's an extra tool in the tool belt to bring more users into the applications and exposing it. And one of the things that I often hear from our clients and our prospects is, wow, that application looks really good. So I want to make sure that more people can start to take advantage of that. So if they're doing their jobs on a day-to-day -day basis, they don't have to be struggling with user experience. They can just get it done, complete their actions, and move on with their lives for the things that they actually want to do. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's. Why don't we cycle through the contestants again, see where they're at. Um, so again, we're seeing more great UI coming up. I'm seeing those flags. I'm seeing he's trying to get those groups that they're in to show, but it seems like 
uh, some indexing or something may need to happen. He's still working. They still got well, six minutes and 45 seconds. It feels pretty close, Jenny. I'm, I'm pretty stressed. Yeah, I think that they're definitely going to be going down to the wire. They're spending a lot of time in the screens, and what they really need to be looking at are um, also setting up their portal. That is the last step. They have to press publish and have a portal available for all of you to access by the time the uh, clock ticks down in six minutes and 20 seconds. So that's going to be a real push in those last 30 seconds to do the publishing of this screen and of this portal. And also making sure that all their security is set up correctly. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I wanted to jump over to Richard for a second because one of the first things he did was put up that billboard image. And it is really amazing how much it can transform an interface just to have some nice images there to get you in the mood, right? Doesn't it look so much better to go to the screen with the little hands up, get you excited versus, I don't know, maybe something else that does it? Oh, no, there was a big change since Ooh, I was here dark last. mode. Dark mode. I, <laughs> oh, uh, maybe we need to tell the PMs out there we should get that in general for Appian. Uh, I, like, I like that move. I think that really shows her developer background, uh, liking that dark mode and getting a, getting a little more flavor to the screens than we usually see. But yeah, everything's coming along nicely. Um, but we do have just over five minutes to go, which is very exciting. Again, hopefully we'll start seeing some published portals shortly um, so that we can all make sure we can go see uh, what they've built out. I don't know, Jenny. If it was me, I feel like I would really want to go all the way down to the wire and make sure I could get as many points as possible. And you know, they are all working on making a nice UX. UX, yes, it's worth some points to have the least bad, but uh, it's not worth the most points. And that's the only subjective criteria, right? But I think what it really is, is the pressure of me saying, hey, it's not worth that much, but we're sending the links to everybody in the audience. Yeah, I mean, if I was going to have N number of people who I've never met go and access my app and start to judge it, I definitely want to make sure it looks as good as possible. No, that's so true. Oh, I'm seeing a Parajita going into a different screen. Let's look, what's this here? Oh, back into the web API. So right. maybe she missed, uh, did a little typo, missed collecting one of the pieces of data that she needed. Uh, I also always like the testing that all of our designers have as part of it. So you've got that bootstrap testing as part of it. You don't have to do anything extra to set up test scripts. It's all incorporated inside of it. So when people ask, oh, how do we do testing? The same way you do designing, just do it. Just do it, yeah. And Appian makes it easier to just do it every single release. I mean, we take care of the easy, tedious stuff so that you can focus on solving really interesting and challenging problems. Let's jump over to Mario. So Mario's made some progress on his UI. It looks like he pulled in that FIFA logo, really get you in the mood there. Um, and things are things are really coming together for them. I think we haven't checked in on Pull in a while. It still looks, you know, he's working on it. He added the hashtag Team Pull though, so he knows he's trying to get his following to be excited. Oh, look at that over We've there. We've got a good contingency Amazing. over here in the poll camp. Very yeah. good. You know, I haven't seen as many flags as I would like, so there are some flags around, but you know, pick up the flag for the team you're rooting for and left it in the air, yeah. Now, one person here, or a number, have all flags with them, and one of those people are Emmanuel, our winner from Appian World. So can we all give Emmanuel a nice round of applause as well as the champion? Woo! And he can perhaps give some words of wisdom to the winner at the end about how to deal with all that they're going to get from winning this prestigious event and award. <laughs> no, absolutely. All right, Jenny. Oh my goodness, less than three minutes. Wow, this is just flying by. I thought Appian World felt fast, but 30 minutes, it's just, it's incredible. It's a lot, it's a lot. Um, let's see, what is Aparajita up to? Building out using her expression editor, some of the fields in her screen. Um, but she has a lot of dynamic values out here. I really like her screen. Again, I was a little uh, suspicious about her combining both the, vision, bo both the data and also the actions, but I like how she's incorporating it as part of one seamless screen for the voters as well as for the venue and the match schedule. Yeah, no, it's, it's looking great. Let's, let's move along. Let's make sure we can get through everybody, see where they're up to. Here's Richard, haven't checked in in a while. He did uh, make uh, some nice colors on those mm -hmm. box header, you know, but uh, 
I don't know. His, the UI doesn't look quite as rich and full as some of the other contestants, but maybe his will work better and will meet some of the other functional requirements. You That's know? always the hope. You know, it's it's always down to the wire, and it's always about first and foremost getting something out there. Oh, is look it, at this, Jenny. It looks like someone is in the portal publishing manager. Oh, it ends up. He said, I'm going to stop with one minute, 30, 33 seconds left. OK, Mari. That is a big we move. See you. You, I think you just made all the uh, rest of the competitors sweat a little bit, taking that a is, jug of water very well deserved. That is some good confidence over oh there. My goodness. We have our first portal. Now, wow. I don't think that he has clicked the link to try to see it. That's the last step. But uh, I think Mary, he's Oh, he clicked it. He heard you. He heard you. He said, I, I'm really done. All right, we have one minute left. That is our only portal that's been published. Yeah, I'm so, interface. I think. Interface. Interface. It will definitely go down to the wire. Our clock is in red. We've got only 50 seconds left. Oh my goodness. We're looking I forward to seeing everybody else go there. Mario. Now, Mario uh, has a bunch of people watching in from Mexico, so we just want to say hi, Mama Segovia, to his family. You know, make I sure mean, that they get the shout out that they deserve too. They woke up very early to join the live stream, so thank you so much to them. Everyone joining in from India, cheering on Aparajita. And oh my goodness, thirty seconds. Thirty left. seconds. Oh goodness, where should we go? Like quick cycle. Quick All cycle. right, we got we got another portal. We got Richard filling his portal. Okay, let's see what's next. Okay, still in an interface, still in an interface, but there's still a few seconds. Another portal. Come on, Aparajita, you can do it. Get All right, to the portal. We've got ten seconds. Oh, it's down to the wire. Okay. Everyone, help me with the countdown. Three, two, one. Hands up, hands up, keyboard. All right. Oh my goodness, okay. If they are done. I Oof. hope that they have achieved their lofty goal of adequate. And maybe they also have a glimmer of that American celebration. But let's go ahead and bring them out from behind their desks and bring them out in front, and everyone give them a Woo. warm round of applause. Um, the mic. Wow. I mean, how many of you would be brave enough to do something like this? I know there's at least three in the audience who have participated in a live build challenge before, but uh, this was a lot of pressure, and these lights are a little brighter than we've seen. So, Come on. great job. Let's go. Come on, get in down. front of here. Come on, my friends. Richard, Paradita, Paul, and Mario. Great job. Jenny, I think we'd like to hear how they're feeling. Let's see. Yeah. Let's get some post-match analysis down here. So, Mario, that was a very bold move. In one sentence, can you describe your performance today? I think I did great. I achieved my goals. Hey! Aparajita, what was going on in your head? So I missed a few points that I had in my head, but I think I did pretty good. Congrats. <laughs> and Richard, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm not that happy, honest. I had a back issue, so yeah. Uh, luck. Stupid. Classic German uh, understated here. <laughs> I mean, they still all did so great. Yeah, unlike the, or I said rather, just like the US election, we won't know the results of the Live Build Challenge right away. Yes, you'll have to come back in a few hours to the closing plenary we'll, where we will be announcing the winner who will take home the 2,500 pound prize in a guaranteed spot at Appian World. <laughs> And remember, we will be sharing out those links to their portals. Uh, so be on the lookout in the event app or uh, posting on community, and we will let you know. Yeah, and thank you so much to our production team, to, uh, to of course, our contestants, and also to our audience. Woo! On both YouTube and live in person. And of course, thank you to my amazing host, Jenny Dorina. And April Schiffel. Woo! All right. So, everyone in person here, make the most of your last few hours. Go check out all the booths. Make sure you attend some of the final sessions. And go over to the Community Hub. Why, Jenny? Yeah, make sure that you talk to my team. So if you want to see the newest uh, 
things with Appian or if you have any questions, definitely go over to the demo booths and chat to them. They'll be happy to answer anything you might want to ask them. Perfect. Thank you all so much.